dawn broke on the small town of Pallet, the day a young boy named Red began his Pokemon journey. Professor Oak, local Pokemon expert, had called Red and his grandson Blue to his lab to offer them their very first Pokemon. When I was young, Oak remarked, I was a serious Pokemon trainer. In my old age, I have only three left, but you can have one. The fiery-hearted Red chose Charmander, while Blue chose the water-type Squirtle. The professor handed each of them something else, a Pokedex. As he explained, this invention is a high-tech encyclopedia that records the data on all Pokemon. To make a complete guide on all the Pokemon in the world, that was my dream, Oak said. But I am too old, I can't do it, so now I want you two to fulfill my dream for me. Blue, wanting to compare their new Pokemon, challenged Red to their first battle. But being inexperienced, Red's Charmander gets taken down. Blue chuckled arrogantly and headed out, telling his granddad to just leave filling the Pokedex to him. Red, defeated but not having given up, ventured into Viridium Forest, a thick woods crawling with bug Pokemon, where eventually he got the hang of battling and catching Pokemon. He's determined to beat Blue, fill the Pokedex and become a Pokemon master. In order to rise to the top, trainers have to battle all eight gym leaders, as well as beat the Elite Four of the Pokemon League, which means the first stop for Red was the Pewter City Gym. Brock, the Pewter City Gym leader, put up a rock-hard defense, but with a lot of hard work, Brock's tough Onyx was defeated, and Red won his first badge. One down, seven to go. It wasn't long before Red was on a winning streak, taking down the water gym leader Misty and the electrifying Lieutenant Surge. Red's journey then led him to Lavender Town, home of the Pokemon Tower, a graveyard where spirits of Pokemon go to rest. A somber feeling hung in the air, and residents spoke of ghosts appearing in the tower. Nearby, Red came across an orphanage for abandoned Pokemon. Although the owner, Mr. Fuji, was missing, the volunteers explained that they were taking care of an orphaned Cubone, whose mother was killed by Team Rocket, a notorious criminal gang. Red decided to see for himself what was going on in the Pokemon Tower, and came face to face with a ghostly entity, which turned out to be the restless soul of Marowak, Cubone's mother. Red fought against her, and ultimately calmed the distraught spirit. His continuous training and determination led Red to defeat the grass-type loving gym leader Erica and the intimidating psychic user Sabrina, earning another two badges. While in Saffron City, Red learned that the Sylph Company was infiltrated and taken hostage by Team Rocket, who wanted to steal their powerful new prototype Pokeball. Red makes his way to the top floor and confronts Giovanni, the Team Rocket leader, and manages to defeat his vicious Pokemon in battle, rescuing the Sylph co-president. He rewards Red with the Master Ball, the company's exclusive prototype ball, capable of catching any Pokemon. Reaching Fuchsia City, Red stumbles upon the Safari Zone, an expansive park full of rare Pokemon. Of course, catching them is a whole different ball game. Arriving at the Future Gym, Red challenges the leader Koga in a toxic ninja showdown and earns his sixth badge. Red sets out to the next gym on Cinnabar Island, using his surfing Lapras to ride the ocean waves. On the way, he discovers the Seafoam Island Caves full of rushing water. Deep inside, awaited the legendary bird Pokemon Articuno. With a lucky Ultra Ball, Red added it to his collection. Arriving at the Cinnabar Gym, Blade, the hot-headed Quizmaster tested challenges in mind and body. Fighting fire with fire, Red bested the gym leader and earned his Volcano Badge. The final gym lay back in Viridian City, and its leader made himself so scarce that no one even knew his identity. Battling his way in, Red is shocked to find Giovanni at the head of it all. Giovanni's ground-type Pokemon were the toughest challenge yet, but with a powerful Ice Beam from Articuno, Giovanni was defeated and humiliated, ultimately pledging to disband Team Rocket altogether. Before challenging the Pokemon League, Red decided to seek out and capture the remaining two legendary birds, Zapdos and Moltres, which was easier said than done. But ultimately, Red's determination overcame them. Finally, Red arrived at the Pokemon League with his eight badges in tow, ready for the trials ahead of him. One by one, Red struggled against the Elite Four, braving the blizzards of Lorelei's ice types, the swift kicks of Bruno's fighting Pokemon, the otherworldly forces of Agatha's ghosts, and the powerful rage of Lance's dragons. Barely managing to pull through, all of Red's training paid off as he emerged the victor, 
the new Pokemon champion. But Red celebrated too soon. Another trainer had already become the champion. It was Blue. He smirked. I looked all over for powerful Pokemon, said Blue. Not only that, I assembled teams that would beat any Pokemon type. And now, I'm the Pokemon League champion. Do you know what that means? I am the most powerful trainer in the world. Red wasn't about to lose to Blue again, but now he was more powerful than ever. But Red trusted in his Pokemon and all the experience he'd gained along his journey. With a final blow from his Charizard, Red defeated Blue and became the new Pokemon League champion. Oak arrived soon after to congratulate Red on his win and showed disappointment in Blue for his arrogance. Do you understand why you lost? asked Oak. You have forgotten to treat your Pokemon with love and trust. The professor led Red to the Hall of Fame, where Red and his team were forever enshrined as champions. But even after winning the Pokemon League, traveling across Kanto and filling the Pokedex with 149 kinds of Pokemon, Red had one more challenge left, capturing 150. Cyrus.